think we're live. I think we are live. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Jennifer Goulden from the Entrepreneur Life Community, um, where we bring together these people that, you know, there are people um, that you can call at five o'clock or eight o'clock at night on a Friday, and you can brainstorm something amazing. And by Monday, you're like launching an idea. Um, you know, jumping off the cliff and building the plane on the way down. So Shana Recker here uh, is who we're interviewing today, and she's definitely one of these people. Uh, mm -hmm. Shana, Shana is a speaker and a teacher, and she actually helps business owners um, build their online business, especially straight from the beginning, mm -hmm. because she believes that you should be able to do that uh, just with the right help. It shouldn't be as hard as maybe some of these um, other coaches and teachers make it out to be. So she runs sort of some accelerator programs and she has the Dream Hustle Academy, which is incredible. I was just looking through your testimonials on your website and people love you. So hi, Shana. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> yeah, we're going to teach some stuff. Yes, I love that. I love it. So Shana, how'd you get into all of this? Yeah, well, my background, actually, I went to school for, which seems like forever ago, for graphic design. And so my background is actually graphic design. I'm a graphic designer by trade. Uh, and then I got into network marketing. So uh, when I was pregnant with my third child, I was looking for, I was, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Like I always wanted to work for myself, but I just kind of had that, that, but that little bug in me from, from a young child. And uh, it's I just, a thing, isn't it? You either it, have it, you're like born with that. Right. And it's so funny because I, I tell this story, but I laugh because I used to watch the show as a kid. Who's, remember the show, Who's the Boss? Like that shows you how old I am. Yeah. Remember that show? And I'm Angela that old Bauer. too. Remember Angela Bauer? She was like yes. executive. Like I feel like she owned the company. I don't even know what, but she was just like a really powerful businesswoman. And I remember like just feeling like I want to be like her when I grew up. Um, and so it kind of started from there. And um I went to school for graphic design and even when I got out of school I, I I had this like idea that I wanted to help people as a graphic designer start businesses and create all their collateral their logos and at that time they're like yellow page ads and all that kind of stuff that's oh my god that was like the dark right. ages <laughs> great and so I became a graphic designer I worked in corporate and then I got introduced to network marketing which was completely out of my comfort zone um, it was with the health and wellness business and I love the product, jumped into that. Um, I still actually have that stream of income. It's still a business I own. Um, and I just, but that business taught me more about being an entrepreneur. And it's, it was the, the landing or the, the stepping stone, I should say, that got me from, you know, got me out of corporate and into becoming an entrepreneur because I was able to make enough in my very first year of network marketing to leave my corporate job and, you know, become a leader actually in my network marketing industry. That's really interesting. We totally believe in network or network marketing, yeah. um, but some people don't make any money at it. So it's really incredible that you just latched on and found the, the path to actually being yeah. successful into that. That's great. Yeah. And I think that's part of what it was for me is I saw that this was a, a tool for me to get out of the nine to five grind. And I was really passionate about what I was doing. I, I mean, you know, it, it all, it has its challenges. You know, I definitely had to learn some things and go through some stuff, but, um, but it, it worked for me and I just really ran with it and I was able to leave the corporate gig. I um, was a top leader in my network marketing business for um, still, still in one of the top levels today. But kind of like I, the queen of the what of the living room thing, right? Like when yeah. you get into the living room and you do your pitch and you show them what you're what you believe in yeah. and what yeah, that's a huge if you can do that, that's amazing. It's changed a lot now. The business has changed a lot since I started because we used to do that, you know, be in the living room, share the stuff, you know, do the thing. I really love sharing the business. That's really what got me passionate about it because it was a way for people to get out of you know, either a job they didn't love or to create income and time freedom to be home with their kids. Cause that's really what I wanted. I wanted to be home. I wanted flexibility because I knew in my heart, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I just didn't know how I was going to do it. And so when that fell into my lap, I just ran with it. It worked. I left my corporate job, 
And it was probably about seven years in that I started noticing online people who were coaching and they were teaching people how to do things. They were creating programs. They were doing like, at that time it was like Facebook, like Facebook live was just kind of starting when I started my coaching business, but they were doing, yeah, like Facebook lives and they were doing, um, Periscope. I remember following some certain people on Periscope. Oh yeah. Like that, right. And I was just kind of like reading this book one day. And it was this woman who was in network marketing who, be, who created a brand around coaching and teaching other network marketers. And I was just kind of like, if she could do this, like, why couldn't I do something like this? And so I got the idea to start coaching as a network marketing coach. I have to admit, I, I got the idea, but I had so much fear and self-doubt around putting myself out there as my own brand. You don't, you don't seem like you would ever have that. You don't, you seem so solid. Like you would never doubt yourself. Oh no, there was, there was, there's always doubts. There's always fears and doubts. The thing that, yeah. that I do though, is even though I have the fears and doubts, I will take action and do stuff anyways. That's, that's the, the thing that I've learned over time is that the fear is never going to go away. So the only way to make it happen or the only way to find out if it's going to work for you or not is Push to through. do it. Right. Right. Um, so in taking action, like I'm a doer, I love to just try something, you know, even though the fear and doubt is, I there. totally see that. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you're this, definitely a doer. <laughs> yeah. But this particular one was like tricky for me because, you know, when a network mark as a network marketing leader, I could put myself out there because I was, you know, I had the company to kind of, you know, back me or like I could kind of stand behind the company a little bit, but as a coaching business. And that was me putting my full self out there with no backing. It was like just me. Saying, right. You don't, hey, you don't have the ability to say, you know, X number of million people helped or whatever, yeah. all of the things that you would be able to normally the say. With the company. Like, the, the, you know, the network marketing gives you all the collateral, all the you know stuff where I had to develop all of that myself. So that there was a lot of fear there. And also my identity was really wrapped into being a network marketer. So putting myself out there in a new way was challenging because I had a community of network marketers around me kind of going like, what are you doing? Like, why would you do that? But it was <laughs> really right? it was like, yeah. it, but it, this was something that was really tugging at me and I had to explore it. So anyways, long story short, I jumped into becoming an online coach, uh, in 2016 and I had started a brand called girlfriends guides, network marketing. And again, I was still kind of hiding behind a brand, like behind a name, right? And so I put myself out there. That's where I got started. But then about a year into teaching network marketing, I realized that that wasn't really working for me anymore. Like I was kind of struggling a little bit. And what I discovered was, is that I actually really loved the process of building my business. I loved learning about like- You love the climb. Yeah, I loved building yeah. a brand. I loved using technology and social media. Um, I loved, you know, how it literally, like I could watch my business. I was watching my business like unfold using all these tools and techniques. And I was finding that people were asking me or talking to me about business ideas that they had and stuff. And then I would just like literally open up and be like, oh, well, you could do this and you could do that and you should create this. And like, you know, and then I was like, wait a minute, maybe I'm coaching is good for me, but maybe I was coaching the wrong thing. And so I started to explore coaching uh, online business versus the network marketing. And that's when I switched my brand and became Shana Recker as I am now today as my brand. And so now you're owning it. It's your name. Now I own it. You, you are know? the brand. Right. Really. And, and the funny thing was, is that uh, a year into coaching network marketing, it wasn't, it started not working for me. And that was kind of a sign. I was getting resistance and the programs I was putting out just weren't clicking and it was something was going on. And I noticed that. And then the minute I aligned with what I knew in my heart, I really wanted to do, that's when everything started to come together and everything started right. to and the success started happening. So it's almost like, um, you know, there's like a path of least resistance, right? When you're hitting, I mean, you can push through almost any challenge, any obstacle to build a business. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's really hard, if it's like you're just butting your head against the wall and it's a lot of work to do, maybe there's something there. Yeah. Like you have to listen to that, right? You have to go, okay, maybe something's not right. Or like you said, it's not aligned properly and you have to just, you have to pivot yeah. um, and well, find the path of least resistance. And I've always say that to my clients when we're coaching, I'm like, I want you to get started. So start with the thing that you feel is what you want right now, but know that that might change as you go through the process, you may discover something about yourself, or you may discover about something during the process that just doesn't feel right. And you, yeah, you may have to pivot. 
I've pivoted. I had a, I had a Facebook group of 1200 people um, that I literally had to like cl close down because they were all there because I was teaching network marketing and it network didn't right to go, Hey, now I'm teaching online business, like, you know, and just convert the group. So I literally just closed down the group and said, I'm changing directions and had to restart. That you know, must have been painful that. having a following like that. And then just going, yeah, it, it is. But at the same time, it wasn't, it wasn't, I needed to make that pivot and it was worth it for me to let go in order to restart, you know, cause I, I just, it didn't feel authentic in saying, okay, guys, you know, I, I mean, I could have given them the opportunity to stay or go or whatever, but it just didn't feel right. So mm -hmm. you know, we just pivoted and that's okay. You can rebuild it. Like if you change direction, you can. Absolutely. You can. And the key was that you were listening. Sometimes you get kind of pigeonholed and into thinking, okay, this is my goal. I've got my vision board and that's what it says I should be doing. Cause I decided on January 1st, yeah. 2020, that that's what it should do. Yeah. And you know, and you're afraid right. to change, but I think being flexible in today's business environment is, I mean, that's, well, that's one of the keys. To this see. year, especially, right? Oh my like, God. Yeah. I had to pivot in the last, you know, three to six months. And I, 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 I share this story. I have a, there's a couple of free trainings I do, but this one free training, I talk about the story about the feather, the brick and the Mack truck. And the okay. feather is that little whisper that you get in your ear that says, Hey, maybe you should like look into that. Maybe you should do that. Or maybe I could do that. Right. And that's like the feather whispering in your ear about, you know, take a look at that or be, you know, just be mindful of that. Or maybe you should explore that. Like and write that down for later yeah. and, and, you know, the dig feather, into that. Right? Yeah. And what happens is, is if you don't listen to that little, that little inner voice that's asking you to go and look in, and, and look into something or try something or do something, then you get the brick. And the brick is like some sort of situation that happens in your life and it's almost forcing you now to take a look at it. And usually the brick isn't something fun. <laughs> usually the brick is like not a great situation in your life that you're now like having to be forced to look at you know, making a pivot or doing something different. And then if you don't listen to the brick, you get the Mack truck and the Mack truck is like, <laughs> is never, that COVID? Is no. Mack truck the COVID? <laughs> right? And so for me, it was like listening to the feather was, you know, back when I first got the idea to do this business, to do, become an online coach, like I didn't listen to the feather when it first told me. And then we did get- So when did the feather come for you? When, when do you think when that? When I was reading that network marketing book and I was like, maybe right. I could get out there and do this. And because I was afraid and because I had the, the fear and the doubt to put myself out there, I didn't, I didn't, I ignored it. Um, then we got the brick, which our, we, our family just entered into like a kind of a crappy financial season, um, mm. based on a lot of factors. But one of the things that, you know, my husband said to me, he's like, what about that coaching business? Like that could be an extra stream of income for us. And it could really make the difference. And that's so, nice that he believed in you like that. That's yeah, amazing. Oh, yeah. he's, he's amazing. Oh, that's so good. Um, and so we, that's when we were like, all right. Like, like I couldn't, my excuses just didn't hold up against what we were facing at that time. So I jumped in. And so that's why I say, if you, if you're getting that message or you're getting that awareness around something, that's the feather and it's whispering in your ear, like maybe you need to explore this. And you actually um, started out, like you spoke at my, at the Entrepreneur Life Expo in March, yeah. which basically happened days before the world shut down. Like days I think yeah. it was days um so we were the last event that happened in Waterloo region <laughs> yeah I know um, yeah but you spoke to everybody um held a seminar or a boss talk on um building an online course yes uh, which is you know you hear a lot of people wanting to teach especially in the in the coach industry and all of that stuff so how did that become um from online coaching mm -hmm. um for online courses to building a business from scratch sort of um is it the same thing is it all the same steps almost is that why like i think the thing is is that it's, it's it comes down to when you're starting an online business it's like well what's your offer like what are you offering so for some of us your product you know it could be an online course with video modules and all that kind of stuff or your offer could be one-on-one -on -one coaching um and it's a package for a one-on-one -on -one coaching it could be a group coaching program um, it could be an ebook. It could be, there's so many different things that your offer could be. And one of the things that I, you know, what I shared in that um, training was just how to, how to take what you know, how to help somebody do 
and you know reverse engineer it to turn it into a product whether it's a coaching program a group coaching program an ebook or whatever right it's like how do you take the final result that you know you can get for people and and what are the steps that lead them to that result and how do you figure that out so then, and then once you know what that result is and what the steps are to get there then how do you create the container for it you know and then how do you, and then what are you pricing it at and what are you selling it for and how are you delivering that content to people right um, so you sort of ask them all the right questions in the right order to help them uh get to the point where they can launch yeah where they can actually now yeah take that product and then the launching part of it's a whole nother system right so there's of like course. I always say like your business is built in phases. There's things that we need to do in the beginning um, to set you up for, you know, being able to create the, the offer and sell it. You're, you know, you can't just create the offer and then go out onto social media and have no followers and no uh, list. That or no is people. my biggest beef. <laughs> that is the thing that keeps me up at night yeah. is I see these people who are talented, amazing uh, people that could really have an impact on the world of others. And they build this incredible business. Um, maybe they built it with you. I'm not sure, but they build it, they brand it, it's all there, they launch, yeah. and then they don't market it. <laughs> and it just, and then they're like, oh, you know, it, they feel defeated and they think it didn't work. But what yeah. didn't work is the fact that they didn't invest in themselves to actually get the word out there so yeah. people could take advantage of this incredible thing that they built. Yeah, they didn't show up, right? Because yeah, you gotta show up. You have to, in these days, if you're not a voice consistently out on your social media platforms and, and you're consistently not like out there giving value, you're, you're basically non-existent. People can't find you. It's not that your product necessarily is bad, it's that they just didn't know you or your product existed because they, they never heard from you. So it's, you know, if you have to make the commitment, if you're gonna start an online business, you have to make that commitment to be able to get over your fear and get out there and talk to people and get and not and like not talk to people. You're basically talking to air, but you know what I mean? Like on <laughs> social media, you just got to get out there and start using your voice and the people will come, but you've got to give it enough time. I, I, I find that so disheartening when I see, like you said, businesses get started, they've got a great product or all this stuff. And they're just like, you know, they're, even three months in and they're like, oh, this doesn't work. Forget it. And it's like, exactly. Three months. I've been doing this for five years. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> exactly. My first year was like, it's all lessons in that first year. Like, you know, so you got to give it enough time. Yeah. Well, and maybe that kind of goes along with the, the sort of, if I build it, I'll make money super fast and easy overnight thing. And I mean, I suppose that's possible, but you'd have to have a lot of gas on the fire. You'd have to spend a lot on, on advertising. Um, yeah. Cause if you're going to do it organically, like you said, create content, put it out there, build the followers, have them come and then start selling. It can be over the course of a year to five years. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, your only other alternative is, is spending a lot on advertising, put some, some yeah. gas in the tank. Yeah. Well, especially these days, because I mean, in the beginning when, you know, the internet and Facebook live and Instagram and all these things first started. Yeah. If you kind of got out there and was like, you were able to kind of say, I've got this thing you got, you were able to get seen by a lot of people because the algorithm, the algorithm was our friend then. Yeah. And now it's yes. not, right. So no. I mean, there are still, I mean, there are a few new, you know, platforms that are coming up to talk and things like that, um, where you probably have a better chance of being seen, but even those things are getting more and more filled up with people. Okay. Are you on TikTok? I I'm on TikTok, but are I'm, you dancing? No, I, well, I do it more for like I, I started an account just to play around with it because I wanted to understand it so that I could decide if this was going to be a tool for me in my business or not. And I do see value for people using it in their business for sure. Um, I do not use it for business, however, I Yet. do use it for like I've created a bunch of just different videos just to test things out but I've had a couple go viral which is I have one that's almost at a million million what? views this um it's just random stuff like it's just it's okay just which one went which one went viral what did you do in this video <laughs> I did a video. I, I, I bought myself this year a Louis Vuitton bag, which is like my first time investing in a, in a fancy handbag for myself. And so I did a video. It came in the mail because COVID, I couldn't go to the store. It came in the mail. So my husband just videotaped me opening it up because I was really excited for it. And so I decided I'm going to throw this on TikTok and see what happens. Yeah, it, it literally just went. People just. That's it, crazy. Because, and the reason being is because with TikTok, 
um, if people watch the whole video, then that like it boosts your algorithm. So because I was opening a package and they had to watch the whole video to see what was inside the box, uh, not to mention because of the unboxing video. is huge. Unboxing yeah. videos on even on Instagram and Facebook, really, they're huge. And in yeah. TikTok, it's only 15 seconds, right? It's uh, I think you can be up to no, it's longer than that. It can be up to, I think, a minute. Um, OK. And yeah, so if if you keep them watching and if they watch it over and over again and again, the same things, if they comment on it, if they share it, if they like it, like all of that stuff boosts your algorithms. Right. So. Um, so I did that video and it literally went viral <laughs> so, to the point where like there was, I had to stop looking at all the comments and stuff. It's like, and it's interesting with TikTok because you can see that your video is actually moving around the world because for, I got a bunch of English, English like comments and North American kind of comments. And then it went to like Germany or something. And then I was getting all these like German comments and then it went to like, I don't, I was just like, if you look at the comments, the, 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 cause they type in their, their language. Right. And so half of the comments, I have no idea what they're saying, but um, that is so cool that you yeah, can it watch a, it go around the world. It's, it's, so. a, it's a good tool. And I think that um, it's good. But one of the things that I'm actually teaching right now is because these social media platforms, like in the U S TikTok may, may be gone because president Trump is wanting to ban it. Right. I don't know if you heard that. No. But, yeah, so he wants to ban Nothing surprises me in no. that realm. <laughs> he wants to ban TikTok in the US. And oh. so there are a lot of people who have built massive followings and businesses on TikTok in the US. Yeah, so that's what's that's potentially what could be happening in the States. So this is why I wanted to create that training that I'm doing on Thursday about why you need an email list. Like having a Yeah, you can't be a slave to these platforms because no. if they if they go away, if or all of a sudden they're ten thousand dollars a month in order to keep them, you've built the audience, you have the people there, and now it's gone, or you or you have to pay the host hostage price of whatever it is they're charging. Yeah. Um yeah. So you do you do a class on um building an email list this Thursday is that one yeah well just it's you know because it's this this whole thing with TikTok was a really good reminder that we don't own our followers we don't even own our content that we put out on these social media platforms so um and they could like you said they could take our followers away they could take our accounts away um you know and even the algorithms like we're like a slave to the algorithms right I have 16,000 something followers on Instagram but that's not who there's not 16,000 people seeing my stuff. Right. So I'm getting, no, that's so frustrating though, isn't it? Right. 16,000 people should see your stuff. If you have 16,000 followers, that's not but fair. They, they don't. Right. So no. and that's just the way that it is though. We don't, we can't control that. So what where where I've always believed is that, and I've done this from day one in my business is build an email list because that's, even though email isn't, you know, not every email is getting open, the percentage of email that gets open versus the percentage of people who are seeing my content on Instagram or Facebook is drastically higher. And then right. one level above that is now getting into text messaging marketing, which is now that's huge right now, yeah, which has like almost a hundred percent open rate. So I always open my text always. Right? Whenever a text comes in, it's the first thing I'm doing is checking it right so what we need to do is learn how to move our followers from our accounts into our list whether it's email text or both really um and so the TikTok situation is just a, a good reminder that you know you may have fifty thousand followers on TikTok, instagram facebook whatever but if those accounts were to go away tomorrow which it's 2020 at this point anything, anything could happen, happen right if murder hornets are a thing yeah. then definitely facebook could evaporate tonight right so, <laughs> um, we need to start moving those people from from the platforms to something we own which is our email list or our text messaging list or both so what would you tell if if uh, business owners and entrepreneurs are watching this and they want to start taking steps to really take ownership and build a real email marketing list or just an email list of followers, you know, something that belongs to them. Um, what do you suggest? What's, what, are, what is the way to do it that's easiest? Well, I'll give you some quick steps. And, and I'm actually doing, like I said, a free training this Thursday, the 13th. Um, it's at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you guys actually- Is that online? It is. If you actually go, if you text the word kickstart to 343 three zero zero 
0040, you will um, get a link to join the free training. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then you can get a little sample of how text messaging works. with. And people. then you can see how Shana does uh, teaching because she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I have fun when I teach, that's for sure. <laughs> so the first thing is, um, and we've already talked about why you need an email list. Obviously, mm -hmm. because you don't own your followers. And it is, I do find though, also with an email list is um, majority of the sales when I am in a launch come from my email list versus my social media. So the sales are actually higher from your email list. But the first thing you need to do is you got to know your niche, right? You got to know who you're talking to. You need to know who your ideal client is uh, because that's the person that you want to attract to your list. You, I would much rather see you have a small list of ideal clients that are niche to your market than to have a giant list of just a whole bunch of random people because they're not, they're actually going to affect your open rates, which is going to affect your deliverability. And that's just going to be not fun for anyone. So you want to make sure that you have, you know, your niche really, what are they struggling with? What are their pain points? What are their dreams? Because you want to create something that's going to speak to that, right? That's something that they are struggling with that if you were to create a document, a, a, a training, a free training or an audio or something, that is going to help give them a quick win. So that's number two, right? Is you so you want to basically speak or, or write mm -hmm. in a way that you're sitting, you're sitting over coffee, just like you and I, and you're talking back and forth um, yeah. and what you would like that tone, how you would speak directly to that person. Yeah. You want to like, so for instance, let's say like, for instance, the whole, um, this whole TikTok thing, like let's say my ideal client is a TikTok user in the US, like that's, you know, whatever. They love TikTok and they're using it every day and they're making money. But now they're facing this whole thing of like, shit, I might lose my account tomorrow because of President Trump. I need to move these followers somewhere. I can't even imagine. Well, right. And so they find my free guide on how to move followers from TikTok to an email list. Guess what they're doing? They're signing up because they need to know how to do this. It's a problem they have. It's a pain point. It's something they need to fix. So when you're thinking of your niche, like, what are the things that they're struggling with the most? And then, you know, what can you provide a quick win for? The, the idea here when you're creating an email list is you want to be offering out content that gives them a quick win. So not a guide that's going to take them 90 days to complete. And then, you know, in 90 days, they're finally going to get a result. You yeah. will have lost them before then. You want something that they can implement like right away within 20 like today. Yeah. yeah. They can do, yeah, yeah. oh, wow, that worked. That was amazing because that quick win builds that trust with you. And so guess what? They want to come back for more. They want to find, listen to more of your stuff, follow more of your things. Brilliant. So they, you want to do that. Um, and, and even once you know your niche, that's when you really want to build the foundation, right? So step number two, I would say, be build the foundation. So get out there and give lots of free value so that you have an audience so that when you release this lead magnet that you're going to create in exchange for email addresses, you actually have people in your audience that will be like, heck yeah, I want that. And they're signing up, right? So, right. And for those who are super newbies, um, a lead magnet is just, it's the content that makes people sign up um, for your email list in exchange for whatever amazing thing you're going to teach them. You have to provide impact before income. So you do have to, yeah. you know, give them your best tip, give them something that's really going to make an impact on them today. And that, that's kind of the definition of a good lead magnet. Absolutely. And that's, that's step number three is, is create that lead magnet. So once you've figured out your niche, you've built a foundation, you've got some followers some things happening, then you want to offer out your lead magnet. And that could be multiple different things. Quizzes are big right now. It could be just a PDF document that you've created in Canva that gives them, you know, five steps to, you know, this transformation or this result. Yes. P.S. I love Canva. Oh, I, I know. Love it. I'm a graphic and designer. I, me I too. Do. I started off in graphic design and coding and let me tell you, Canva's got it. I mm -hmm. use Canva all the time. <laughs> I rarely. There's no shame. It. No, I rarely <laughs> open Illustrator or InDesign or any of those things. I just go straight to Canva. Um, so Canva is your best friend. So you sign up for Canva. You can create easy, quick documents. There's tons of templates there, um, but you could also do a video training. You could do an audio training. I know lots of people who do meditations and things like that, free meditations as their lead magnets. Um, you could do SoundCloud recording, uh, you know, playlists. My husband's actually going to do a, a, a music playlist to like he uses when he's creating his art as his lead magnet for his followers to his art business. And 
They can get his free playlist, you know, that kind cool. of stuff. So there's lots of different cool things you can create. And it's fun to be creative like that. Like so unique. Who would have thought? Yeah. I would never have thought to do. Well, as an artist, he's like, what do I give away? Like, I don't know what to give away. And I'm like, what about the music you? Because he's always listening to amazing music and he, his art is about music. So I'm like, what if you created an amazing playlist that you could exchange an email address for and you're going to send them a link to this playlist that you've created? I so love that. We're working that's on awesome. that. But that's what you're going to do is you're going to create something that's going to give somebody uh, something they want, something that's going to make them feel good, a quick win, a result. And then you got to set it all up, right? So then you need your yeah. tech. So you need a landing page to be able to, you know, say to people, this is what I've got. This is how it's going to help you. Here's a full, few bullet points around what this is going to do for you. Give me your, you know, put your name, your email address, your cell phone number in here, and I'll send you this document. It's like, you know, just like a little, it's not a website. It's just a little landing page. You can use MailChimp, lead pages, I think convert kit. There's a lot of great um, software out there to help you do that. Um, and then you, you use, can I ask that? I use Kajabi. So I'm, I'm okay. Yes. Yeah, so it's all built in. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Kajabi because it is all in one. Um, and so you are going to then need your email system to be able to deliver that document, that free, that free thing that you're giving away. And I like to make sure that the free offer that you're giving is delivered to their inbox because it gets your new prospect used to your name showing up in their inbox. Sometimes you can do it where when they give you your name and everything on the, the landing page, it could go to a thank you page that has a download here button. Mm -hmm. um, but I want them to get comfortable with my name showing up in their inbox and I want them to open that first email. And so, it'll be less likely to be marked by your inbox as spam if they've previously received and opened something from your email address. 100%. And now mm -hmm. they're used to seeing, like now they're like, oh, this is cool. And they've gotten some value out of that email. So once you get your text set up, the next thing you want to do is you need to nurture the people who are coming into your list. This is not That's a kind of an art form, isn't it? Right. It's not a one and done kind of thing. Now that they're in your list, like now you have to create the relationship with the, with them. So you want to continue to give them value. So what I like to teach my students is to set up a, it's called a welcome sequence, which is typically, you know, it used to be four to five emails, but now they're even getting longer to, to really help build that relationship and continue to deliver value around, you know, what it is that you do and what they're struggling with and their pain points and that kind of stuff. So, and, and the nurture list is not to hit them over the head with sales. Um, no. You're not going to be like, buy this and do that. And I have a special and blah, 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 blah. Um, It's really about generating that relationship and show and, the, you know, like, know, and trust and just yeah. getting to know like Shane and Wrecker as a human and as a professional. Yeah. And me getting to know them, I always encourage in my nurture list, like simply reply to this email. Let me know how you're doing with this or tell don't me. Don't you wish about more it. people would? Yeah. And I feel great. like they don't think we're authentic, that we don't actually want to hear back, but we really do like reply with all of the things. I love reading those kinds of emails and getting I always to know. say like, this goes to my personal inbox. So please, yeah. like, I want to hear from you. I love it. And then after you've got that set up and created, now it comes to marketing your lead magnet. And really when you're marketing your lead magnet, it's about being omnipresent with it. So you're going to talk about your free thing in your Facebook live videos. You're going to put it in a link to it in a blog post. You're going to do an Instagram post about it. You're going to do a Facebook post about it. And not just once. Again, this is not a one and done thing. It's not like you're going to go, okay, guys, here's my lead magnet. It's all in these places. You got to do this consistently. Can people need to hear about it like seven to 13 times before they're actually going to sign up for it? So it doesn't mean like every day you're like, hey, my lead magnet's here. Hey, have you got my lead magnet yet? It's about sprinkling it in every day in all your different spaces so that people can find it and, um, and want to download it. Now, when you're doing a, a welcome sequence, do you email them every day or is it like every day over 10 days or is it over this? Is it once a month? I actually space it out. So um, I have a current welcome sequence that's, I think it's five emails right now, but I actually want to extend it and make it longer. Um, but I do like the lead magnet goes day one, like immediately. And then day two, I'm like, Hey, you know, you've had a few days with this. Tell me how you're doing with it. And um, did, by the way, did you see this? And I give them a little extra value. Like, did awesome. you see this part or did you like, know to do this too, like to give them some extra like tips. So you call out like takeaways from, yeah. from the free training or whatever yeah. it was that you offered. Awesome. Remind them. And sometimes also you can, in that second email, 
is also put another link to the download because how many times have you signed up for something and you actually didn't have a chance to look at it and then now it's gone down in your email so many times right. so many it's embarrassing the reminder <laughs> for that second email can be like oh and if you haven't if you haven't downloaded it yet here's a handy link to get it today and hopefully they can download because here's the thing at the i at the end of the day even if you get their email that's great. And they're on your list and you can nurture them. But if you are not getting them a result, you're there. It's not, it's not a win, you know, like you want them to open that freebie. You want them to do the things in that freebie because you want them to get the result. That's what's going to build the, the trust. And that's how they'll remember you. Cause right. if they just download it and it goes into their downloads folder on their computer or their phone, um, and they never actually at it. use it, is that you're not really, yes, you're getting their email, but you're not gaining anything relationship wise. So if you do want to a month from now, sell them something um, or sign them up for your next big course, you're less likely yeah. for that you to actually. You want to get them a result as quickly as possible. So that's why it's like, you know, if you want them to open it. And that's why you also want your lead magnet to be, you know, tied to your niche and tied to their pain points and, and being able to give them that quick win. Like that's, you've got to be smart about that. And here's the other thing. Your lead magnet might be something today and next, you know, in three months from now, you may want to change it based on what's happening in the world, what's happening in your business, what's happening with your clients, needs that you're seeing that need to be met. It may need to shift and change. But it and needs to that's pretty much guaranteed in 2020 that you're going to be changing that lead magnet you know, every yeah. other month. <laughs> my, first, <Murder> hornets. <laughs> right, my first lead magnet that I created, which was super successful was how to um, become a, it was called be, how to become a Facebook live superstar. And that was when Facebook live had first just come out. And I created a guide that showed them how to get their stuff set up, what they needed, the lights, the microphones, all the things, how to do an actual Facebook live, what to think about, what not to think about. And I built like, I think it was like a thousand email. I got a thousand emails within like the first, I don't know, I want to say a couple months of just getting that out there. But the thing is, is after a while, everybody was using Facebook live. Nobody, everybody knew how to do it. Like no, there yeah. was, yeah, there's probably still a few people out there who may find value in that, mm -hmm. but I, I had to change and shift and, and move it around because it was, you know, people just kind of were like, oh yeah, now I know how to do that. It's not so new. So right here's now. a question. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people um, in your space would make a, a YouTube video teaching mm -hmm. people how to do it to try to get more YouTube followers or, or whatever. Um, and you're, but you're not giving that, that content for free. It's not just sitting on YouTube. You're using it as a lead magnet. So do you think that the other people who are just throwing all of this stuff on Facebook and Instagram and all of their teachables and just like hoping their audience comes that that's a mistake and they should be using it instead as a lead magnet or is it like a 50 50? I think it's a combo. Like I think like, you know, if you have, you have content, you still want to deliver content, free content. Like I do free IGTV stuff all the time. I'm like, right. you know, I'm valuing doing this class, all these things. I have a, like another free training. Like but um, it's, it, I would still have something that you're exchanging an email for. So maybe there's one juicy nugget that you don't have. On, on so save the good stuff for the juice, yeah. for the lead magnet. Yeah, you could. And, and Hey, if it is an actual free video on your YouTube somewhere, so be it. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like people will, will find it. They'll still download it. Like, you know, it's not a huge deal if yeah, it's on my YouTube channel somewhere, but now I'm also asking for an email address for it over here. Like so you can have both. I, I would rather just see you get it out there and have something that you're asking for email for, even if it's something that you're taking from a YouTube training that you did, you know, a year ago, take right. that. If it's, if it's a really popular YouTube thing, um, then yes. Like I actually have that on my email or sorry, on my website, I did an interview with Dean Graziosi and mm. um, it was great. And it's on my YouTube channel. You can watch it for free. He's got some of it on his YouTube channel as well. But I also on my website, if you land on my website, now it's not there now because I have I replaced it with something temporarily, but to see it, um, you would have to give me your name and email address. And then I put it on a landing page for people to watch it. So they, once they put in their info, the, the interview pops up on a landing page and they can watch it right then and there. So yeah, it exists for free on mm. YouTube, but it, it's also there on my website. So if someone lands on there and they're like, oh, I want to watch this, they put in their info and the video pops up for them. So Right. I just think just, just, yeah. Now landing for landing pages are sort of an art form as well. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people will test, you know, two, five, even 10 landing pages. 
Um, what landing page has worked the best for you? Like, is it long? Is it short? Is it straight into the point with three bullets, send in your stuff? Or is it like the big sales letter version where there's 1500 words? <laughs> like, what, it, what has worked best for you? Well, I, I, I think short and sweet and to the point is best because I think people's attention span are mm. super, super <laughs> open. Yeah. And I think about my own habits when I'm on, on long sales pages. And when I'm on long sales pages, I'm literally like scrolling really fast to try and find. I am, I am the best at that. I should win yeah. an award for how quick I can get to the bottom. <laughs> And so I just think of my own stuff now is I, what I do think is, is successful on sales pages are one, like a, a catchy heading, a good photo. Um, I think you got it. The cleaner, the better. Cause here's the thing from a graphic designer's perspective is a confused eye says no. So if there's too much stuff going on, if you've got too many pictures in the background and layers and tops of like too many things going on, it, it's confusing. People will be like, no, nah, I'm out click. Right. Cause there it's right. too much. So a clean uh, landing page, catchy header, few bullet points to talk about what they're going to, what the result is going to be for them. It's always all about your prospect. What so it's not about the bullets aren't about what's in it. It's about the result that you're going to get from yes. what's in it. What you are like going that. to learn, what you are going to get out of this. And then um, this, the clear space to put in the info. Um, and then if you do have testimonials, you know, I think the best way to put testimonials on a landing page are like, if you have the screenshots of someone sending you something on your phone, like screenshotting it, cropping it and using that like raw graphic versus typing it out, making it all look pretty. All look pretty. Those text messages that you're getting or those Facebook messages that you're getting where you like scratch out the person's name because you obviously want to protect that, but mm -hmm. if you actually scratch it out with like the little marker that you on the phone. Right? Yep. <laughs> right. And you put that on your thing because that is real. That's real. Like that's yeah. not like if you type it all out, make it look pretty, I could have made that shit up, right? Where the so text true. is real. Yeah. So I think those are the best way to show testimonials on your landing pages, but like one or two, maybe three, I don't know. And then, and then that's it. And just get people signed up. That's, that's amazing. Which yeah. marketing is, is like, you only have so many characters to get someone to click the link to go. So you've got to get to the point. Like here's the link for this. It's ruthless editing, right? Like, and it's so hard. You just want to, you want to be like, this is why I love it. And this is why I love it. And I'm the worst at that. It takes me, I'm really good at writing, but the ruthless editing part, getting, you know, just making it, I just want to tell them everything because they're going to, they're going to be so happy when they get this thing. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's definitely uh, a skill. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. It definitely skill. Sometimes I have to like step away and then come back and then like do my, my edits. Cause yeah, yeah it sometimes I always it's... come back the next morning. Yeah. Usually I write it over a glass of wine at night <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then come back in the morning to see did that actually make sense? And if it did, how long winded was it? <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's funny as a, as a tip for writing, cause I know sometimes I struggle writing uh, email or sorry, Instagram, like long form Instagram posts, mm. like where I'm trying to really share. And like, I get really in my head and I'm thinking about that other girl's Instagram posts and how well she wrote that. And then I'm trying to write mine and I'm like trying to kind of sound like hers. And it like, they used to take me like four hours and I used to get like, so frustrated because I was trying to make this point and I couldn't get it out right. And then I finally just kind of was able to learn how to just kind of block out the noise and just tap into here and go, what am I trying to say here? Like, what does my ideal client need to hear in this message? What is the thing? And then I would just kind of like deep breath and just kind of write from my heart and just let it go. I love that. Yeah. And That's just really like, good. Cut it out and try not to go back and re-edit it or reread it. I mean, I go back and relook at it because my grammar is horrible and my spelling is horrible. So I <laughs> double check for that stuff. But I try That's why you never put graphic designers in charge of the final um, editing. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they, that's why their contract says that they're not in charge of that <laughs> for that exact reason. No. I've since <laughs> hired, I hired a, a VA who helps me with my social media and it's great because she has a copywriter on her team. So I, right. she gives me like some bullet points to write about. And then like, so she kind of triggers my brain for topic stuff. And then I go Ooh, in. And I go, love that idea. Yeah. It's great because they know, they really know my ideal client. They know me. They've really, you know, spent some time doing that. I've given them some info and they, they've gone through my stuff and 
I can, they, they give me like a week's worth of content ideas and starter points. And then I go through and add my two cents over everything uh, so that it's really my voice, but it's very helpful because sometimes you're sitting there in front of your Instagram, you're like, okay, what do I need, what do I need to say today? You know, and like, <laughs> now I'm, now I'm getting this, um, this help to get this stuff, this stuff written and get it out there. And then they go back through and they'll edit it again. So and that's great because, you know, we get ideas of stuff that we want to share or teach or write all day long, but it's when you sit in front of the computer at, you know, seven in the morning and you're ready to like fire that out. Um, and that shit is not coming to you at all. <laughs> it's just not happening. I find that my mind goes blank though. It's like, I go to yeah. sit and write and all of a sudden I'm like, why can't I think of anything? Like I have, I have so many things I could talk about. And then it all of a sudden it's so like, many. Yeah. And then it just goes. And so this really helps keep me um, triggered with ideas and stuff. But um, at the end of the day though, you guys, like I, I could care less if I read, if I'm reading a post that's from the heart and it's a, it's a good message. I don't see spelling mistakes. I'm not seeing the grammar mistakes. Like, don't worry about those things. Like yeah. just get the content out there. And in fact, I think people feel more comfortable when they see people who can write and do those things in there are mistakes in there because they go, Oh good. She makes mistakes too. She's like me. Like, you know, there's no room, for, there, there's no need for perfection Absolutely. in putting yourself out on social media or in your business or whatever you're doing. It's more about focusing on this, like being of service and getting your message and your mission out there. So don't let the perfection thing stop you. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, so many people um, get paralyzed by perfection. Um, it's a real thing, you know, yeah. especially if you're writing. I think a video is almost easier, especially for someone like you, where it's very organic. So you'll just, you'll go on there, you kind of have one or two talking points, and you just go off the hip. Um, I think the more and maybe that's why writing is more difficult sometimes is you're, you're organizing your thoughts and you're, you're getting into every little thing. And really you just need to just speak, speak to the person, speak authentically. If you spell badly, that's, that's okay. There is going to be the people in the comments that go, well, it's not, it's not that you were, yeah. it's this you were, you know, or whatever, but you know what, they still at least read your message. So <laughs> Exactly. Right. I know it's, uh, it's, it's better to just get it out there than it's, you know, I always say it's better to get it done than to be, you know, to try and be perfect. Cause if you try and be perfect, it'll just never get done. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so like one last question about your, um, your following, cause it is huge. You said you have 16,000 people on Instagram. Yeah. How long did it take you to get there? Like, yeah. no, good questions. Well, I'm going to share some hacks for doing okay. your Instagram. Um, so I built to probably, I would say around maybe 5,000, just kind of by showing up consistently. And I still build, you know, followers today just by showing up and trying to be consistent with my posting and my value and things like and that. And so that's everyday posting or multiple times day. throughout the day? I'm posting probably three times a week on my feed. Um, maybe one okay. or two random ones on the weekend, but I'm in my stories every day. So stories I'm consistently in, and I'm trying now to really make sure that I'm doing at least one or two IGTVs every week as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's where, I, mean, I know that's where everything's going is to video. So as often as possible. And now Instagram reels is here, although I don't have it yet. I'm like, why don't I have it Instagram? You haven't given it to me yet. My husband has it and I don't have it. Um, first of all, I did have a company that was helping me. Um, at that time it was called 21 social and they're a local company that does, um, Instagram growth on your behalf. So they do, um, you know, they find your ideal clients, they do the engagement for you. Um, and it was great. Uh, they helped me get over the 10,000. Um, uh, it was great, but what I didn't like about it was you couldn't, like I couldn't follow or unfollow anybody because they were controlling that and they were going right oh. to that. So, you know, like I, they were just, I wasn't seeing my friend stuff because they had me following so many different people. And like, it, it just kind of just didn't become fun anymore to be on Instagram. And if you do like accounts on your own and you go over the limits, you can go into Instagram jail, which is like, they freeze your account basically for a couple of days until you get out. And so I just, I just, after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm, I'm over the 10,000. We'll just, I'll just let this happen organically for a bit longer. And then the other thing that I was saying before is that there's these really great loops you can do on Instagram and they're fairly inexpensive. 
Um, and okay. you can find loops that are targeted to what maybe your ideal client would be. It might not be exact, but close. And I like the loops because they're real people, real accounts that are looking to grow their Instagram also. And if you even just search the oh. word, Oh, like yeah. the collab, the collectives yeah. where we all like each other's posts and comment. Yeah. I'm in a couple of those. Okay. Yeah. yeah those like are that. great. Um, like a couple of the ones that I've done. Um, if I just quickly look at my Instagram, um, if you just even type the word loop in your, you know, in the search, you'll find um, some good ones, but some of the ones that I like, um, there's one that's called, uh, women underscore follow underscore loop and it's women. And they're like, it's all women looking to grow their Instagram accounts. And you can become, what I like to do is I like to become a ghost host because that way you don't have to post anything. You don't have to do anything. You just pay them. Like sometimes it's like $10 us, 15 us, and you get to be part of their next loop. It's real followers, real people. Now my tips, if you're going to do a loop like that, is that it's one thing to be a part of the loop and get those followers. It's the next, the next thing is, is to keep the followers. And so to keep the followers, right. maybe you need to engage with them. You need to like their photos. You need to send them some comments, maybe send them a private message, you know, do some things to welcome them to your page, ask them questions so that they want to stay. So, cause you will find if you do these loops and you don't do the engagement, you're, you, you kind of go right. like up and down, up and down. Like there's a bit of a, like this that happens. Hmm. Um, so those are a couple of the hacks that I've personally done to grow my account. And do you find that they're your, I, like, they're the people that you want following some you? I mean, yeah. Are, that's why I say like, there's different, some of them are like loops for bloggers. Some of them are loops for women. Some of them are loops for, you know, mama tribes. Like there's different ones out there. You just have to see and find one that's fairly close. But for me, I'm, my ideal client is a female, um, per, is, is a woman who has an idea and maybe wants to start a business. So there's a lot of women out there who are in that. Like a lot, like right. 90%, let's face it. So right. now's your time. <laughs> for a lot of them on maternity leave, right? Like I know yes. that's where a lot of, for me, my, you know, wanting to start a business came when I was on maternity leave and things like that. So for me, like. That's yeah. where one of my biggest businesses was born was during maternity leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why for me, these loops are, are great. And you know, not everybody's my ideal client and those who here's the thing at the end of the day, if people unfollow you, they were never going to be your client to begin with. Right. So just, right. And, mm -hmm. don't, and, and don't get hung up on unsubscribes, unfollows un anything, because those people were never your people to begin with. And that's why, you know, they're gone. Right. And that's why when it comes to your email list, like every so often you need to scrub your email list, which means you need to get rid of people who are not opening your emails after a certain amount of time, because those unopened emails that are sitting in people's inboxes actually affects your de deliverability rate. Right. So you go in, in, in Kajabi, there's a way that you can just click a button. It tells you who hasn't opened an email in 90 days, who hasn't, you know, done any, like there's a couple criteria. And then and you I'll just get rid of those or do you try to re-nurture them somehow? No, I just, cause they're not going to open it anyway. So I just, yeah. I just click their names and just hit unsubscribe. Right. Don't, don't beat your head against that wall. What's no, the point? It's not, mm -hmm. it's not. Worth it. So, um, like you said, a small, a small number of your, your right fit clients is so much more valuable than yeah. 2000 people who really aren't. Right. And that's the thing for me, my list in the beginning was built off uh, up of a lot of network marketers, which potentially a lot of them can still be my ideal clients, but those who just stopped opening. Because Those are entrepreneurs. If I ever heard one, they are. And I know at some point they're going mm -hmm. to want to use their, you know, to go to the next level or try something new. But, um, you know, a lot of them wanted to leave because they saw me pivot and they were like, no, I want network marketing advice, not business advice, which to be honest, the business advice would still be helpful for them, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. You've been, you've been such a great interview. So many, like so many ta hacks that we can actually take <laughs> away and apply today. And, and that's like my very favorite thing because now oh. I'm going to go do a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And you know, um, even we've all heard some of, some of these hacks here and there as we've been building our businesses and we all, uh, uh, but you need to hear it again from mm -hmm. a different perspective sometimes for it to click yeah. and for you to go, okay, you know what, today's the day. I'm going to do that. And next thing you know, like new doors are opened and you're making progress and it's, it's amazing. So, well, you've got, first of all, a free training online um, yes. that you talk about. It's your uh, getting started masterclass. 
I have two. Yeah. So the, there is, um, so if you're somebody who's looking at getting started in the online space, you have a business idea. Um, I do have a masterclass called the 4C formula. Um, and it is a free class that teaches you what I, I, it's four steps to getting started online. So there's literally tangible steps that you can walk away with in that free class to help you get your business going. Um, so that is at awesome. shanarecker.com. Um, you can check that out or you can always DM me on Instagram at shanarecker and I'd be happy to send you a link to that as well. Uh, there's a, there's a great workbook that goes with it too. Um, and then I'm also hosting an impromptu sort of quickie, like I just decided on the weekend that I'm like, I need to teach people about email lists. So this TikTok thing, that was on. um, so I'm doing Being an entrepreneur, late night idea next yep. week. It's happening. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Great. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, shoot, people need to learn how to do this. So I'm doing a, an Instagram or a training on Thursday night on my, in my zoom room. So if you want the link to that, you can just go to either shanarecker.com or you can text the word kickstart to 343-300-0040 and it'll give you the link to join us um, on Thursday night at 8 p.m. And I'm going to talk all about how to build an email list and I am going to touch on text messaging as well. Um, I'm just getting into the text message thing. So I'm mm, going to- Me too. I'm considering doing a service and trying to figure out which one I want to use. And, yeah. but it's, it's exciting because it's right. We all love text and we all open them. So it's the way to go, I, I dabbled in it, like, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. And I, it just kind of was like, my brain just couldn't go there at that point. But now I'm seeing how, how really pivotal it's going to be for the future. So um, it's time to step up and, and do that work. So I will teach as much as I know <laughs> on Thursday <Yeah. laughs> about that as well. But uh, really, yeah. it's more about building that solid email list. Even at this point, if you're collecting cell phone numbers, whether you do anything with them or not, at this point, is is you know, it's just if you can if you can add that to your forms, that's just going to be mm -hmm. a big step in itself. Um, but so hey, some people will not share their their some their cell phone, and that's fine. That they'll just do the email, and that's great. Yeah. But some people love the text, so give them the option. I just have it on my forms for signing up. I don't make the cell number mandatory. The email is obviously mandatory, but um, and like some people willingly just give it and others don't, and that's fine to say. So um, even just having it on your forms right now is just a good step, but uh, in the right Absolutely. direction. So I'm going to be teaching all about that Thursday. And again, you can always DM me on Instagram at Shana Rector if you want the links for that as well. So. And what time on Thursday? 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Perfect. I always struggle with what times to do things. Yeah. I'm like, I want to do in the afternoon, but I want more people to be able to be on. Yeah, yeah there's all. So, anyways, we went with 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is like the perfect time for me, right? Because the day after is dinner, done. Yeah, <laughs> after dinner, kids are either in bed or kind of settled. You can jump on the computer for an hour and then, you know, head to bed after. Yeah. That's, That's when great. It, yeah, I'm excited. So. Well, thank you so much, Shana. Um, I think this has been awesome. I think there's lots of takeaways and we're going, I'm going to uh, itemize those takeaways when I post this to the website as well. Uh, people will be able to find this on Facebook, obviously, because we live streamed twice because <laughs> of internet issues. Uh, but also it will go out on Instagram and on Shana's channels. And this will go straight to the podcast once I have the audio only put together. Um, so so yeah, there's plenty of ways to catch this video and to catch Shana Recker online. You can catch her at shanarecker.com. You can check her out on her Instagram channel, which has a gazillion followers. And listen, if you'd like to cut to the chase because you know you're ready and you want to start your business right now and you just need a mentor and a kind of a guiding hand to take you through the steps, Dream Hustle Academy um, is actually on half price right now. There's video modules, workbooks, live live Q&A calls every month, a private community, and lots of more good stuff. And to check that out, it's bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y slash Dream Hustle Academy. Otherwise, just jump on her free masterclass this Thursday at 8 o'clock. So thanks again for listening. If you want to check out more interviews, it's entrepreneurlife.ca, or check out any of our channels, or shannarecker.com.